we hear so much about the economic vulnerability that our country is facing, but tonight we're going to introduce you to a company in Richardson that seems to be defying the odds. It all happened when they jumped into the video games industry, and this evening we'll show you what goes on behind the screen. To some, they are the ideal way to vent frustration. Some see them as a personal challenge. Others as the objectionable subject of a personal crusade. But for all of us, video games are part of our lives. For some people, a very big part. These are the addicts, the players who have perplexed Pac-Man and outlasted asteroids. They know everything there is to know about video games, except where they come from. Where do you think they come up with these ideas? I don't know. <laughs> Draw them out of a hat. <laughs> I, I have no idea. They just somebody's brilliant. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they just throw some people in a think tank and see what they can come up with, or computer experts, or whatever you know, guys who get paid to do it. Well, these are the guys who get paid to do it at a company called Games by Apollo in Richardson, Texas. This new kid on the block business programs games for the Atari system, and they're working on a new game every four to six weeks. Maybe what we can do is have a, uh, what do you call those things in the middle of an airport at Carousel? As the luggage starts coming coming through there, you're, you know, you're standing there, you have a little electronic man that's standing there waiting for his luggage to come off. Carousel runs amok. Uh, and it starts spewing uh, baggage everywhere. Your flight has just landed, and you try to retrieve your luggage from the automatic carousel. Suddenly, it runs amok, throwing suitcases into the air. You must try to catch the luggage before it hits the ground, where it will burst open, spilling your unmentionables. Come fly with us, if you dare. Uh, I had the idea about uh, combination of Loch Ness Monster and uh, uh, a shark. Might call it Loch Jaw, something like that. You dive into the murky darkness and enter the shark-infested maze of kelp. You accept the danger, the terrible man-eating sharks, and the lurking menace of a Loch Ness Monster who will pursue you relentlessly. You know what I like about this is I like the name. Uh, it, it's kind of a catchy that, title. Uh, yeah, Lockjaw. It, it's something that you can uh, remember, I think. People aren't sure whether it can be a gobble game or whether it's a, uh, a, a disease or what, you know? And so Lockjaw and Lost Luggage make their way from concept to programming, sporting the look of a video success story. Now, the programmers take a very practical approach to a field that is seen as having a little black magic in it. The components at this stage are less than quarter inch microchips at various stages of memory, a written language program that would boggle even the most proficient gamer, a TV screen, and an individual programmer. So behind all of these games, when we're losing our money, there really is one individual that we can go back and say, dead gum See, I wish people wouldn't think things like that. <laughs> <laughs> I have to go out and buy a pistol now or something. <laughs> Lockjaw is Steve Stringfellow's baby. He's the one responsible for putting in a high enough level of difficulty that keeps you playing the game. Right now, he's four weeks into development with this one. Long enough for this projected view of the screen graphics to resemble the actual video. The diver, I think everybody's happy with right now, but he's been through about 20 different versions. In the early days, the diver looked more like a spider or a spaceship. You see, creating realistic graphics for a home system is much tougher than for an arcade game, since the available grid space is smaller. And personally, I don't like that shark. You know, he's the blockiest looking shark I ever saw, but, you know, working inside what I have, it's probably pretty close to what he's going to look like. Lockjaw is a combination gobble game and maze game. And since the basic play has already been established, I decided to give it a go. We count on somebody like yourself coming in and playing the game because to me, I do it so much. That you Moving know. around that maze is simple to me. Well, I thought I had done all right until I found out the shark hasn't even been programmed to attack yet. The lure of electronic wizardry doesn't play favorites, but the buyer of video cassettes is surprisingly upscale. 
He's between 25 and 35 years old and makes over $30,000 a year. Would you go for a new game called Lost Luggage? <laughs> I've played that one at the airport. I think it'll be more attractive towards the kind of people that play Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, something along that line. A non-destructive sort of game. Non-destructive, non-space. Your flight has... But Ernie Runyon has added destruction of sorts to his new game, like the black suitcase that explodes and scatters your undies. That was Ernie's idea. He's got the graphics for the planes, the clouds, and the carousel. But I can't wait to see the unmentionables. This is the guy who keeps up with it all, director of programming Ed Salvo. Right now, the, the current arcade games are starting to pick up with music a lot and uh, with speech. And uh, our, our games and for the 2600 for the Atari don't have music, and this is the first one that we've done. And to the best of my knowledge, the first one that will hit the market that has a musical intro. Uh, you see there's a few bugs yet. for all of the games come from Larry Miner, sound engineer. This allows me to program the notes and also see the notes. That, that's actually a scale of, of about 60 notes and it goes up and down but very, very fast. You can't hear each note, you hear just a combination of notes. And the latest in video games, personalized attacks. When you get blown up, your initials are flashed on the screen. This is Apollo's bread and butter, Space Chase, one of the games that has rocketed it into a multi-million dollar industry since it went into production last January. Now the company manufactures, assembles, and ships its product all over the world. The industry is changing faster than business can keep up. This production process will probably soon be outdated, and Apollo has already planned several annexation projects. Just imagine that this is the year 1952, and video games are a TV set. That might just make the young games by Apollo a future IBM. You command an intergalactic star cruiser that has landed on a mysterious planet. Now you can be sure that in the near future you'll be seeing a lot more games from Games by Apollo to torment your video talent. Be on the lookout for something called Blue Angels and Cosmic Combat. I think I'll challenge you to a game of Space Caverns. What do you say, Dan? Okay, we'll be right back.